If you're wondering which laptops for developers are worth your money, stick around. After we run through each product, I'll give you my personal take. Would I buy it or would I skip it? No fluff, just my honest opinion. Let's get into it. Asus ExpertBook P5P5045. This thing is a workhorse with a battery that just won't quit, lasting over 15 hours on a single charge. And they even let you upgrade the solid state drive, which is a nice touch. But trying to open the bottom panel feels like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube in the dark. And the multi-core performance is a bit like a student who's great at essays, but bombs the math test. Would I buy it? Yes, for a developer who needs a reliable, long-lasting machine for coding on the go and isn't doing anything too crazy with multi-threading, the upgradability and battery life make it a solid choice. Asus ROG Alex Zephyrus G16 2025 This piece packs a punch with its Intel Core Ultra 9 processor and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080 graphics, all wrapped up in a sleek, lightweight package with a stunning 2.5K OLED display that has a 240Hz refresh rate. However, for the price of a small car, the performance doesn't always justify the cost, and the keyboard feels as lackluster as a Monday morning meeting. Would I buy it? Maybe, if you have money to burn and want a laptop that can handle intense gaming and development tasks, but that keyboard might make your fingers want to go on strike. Dell Precision 5690. This mobile workstation is an absolute unit, boasting a gorgeous 4K OLED touchscreen, an Intel Core Ultra 9 processor, and an NVIDIA RTX 2008 generation graphics card that can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. On the flip side, it costs a small fortune, gets a bit toasty under extreme loads, and has decided that USB-A ports are a thing of the past, so get ready for dongle life. Would I buy it? Yes, if my boss is footing the bill, because this thing is a developer's dream for heavy-duty work, but I'm not selling a kidney to buy it myself. Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2 the two-in-one design is slick, letting you flip the screen around like you're in a sci-fi movie, and it packs enough power for creative work and some light gaming. Plus, they finally added a USB-A port. But the screen's color accuracy isn't top-notch for serious design work, and the battery life is so short it makes a mayfly's lifespan look generous, clocking in at just over 7 hours. Would I buy it? Maybe if you're a developer who also dabbles in digital art and needs that flexible design, but be prepared to hug a power outlet like it's your long-lost lover. HP Omnibook Ultra Flip 14. This little convertible is super portable with a beautiful OLED screen and a battery that lasts about 10 hours, making it great for working from a coffee shop and looking fancy with its 4K webcam. But it crumbles under pressure like a bad souffle when you give it intensive tasks, has no USB-A or HDMI ports, and the glossy screen reflects more than a funhouse mirror. Would I buy it? No, because while it's a sleek machine for light coding and browsing, it just doesn't have the guts for serious development, and I need a laptop that can handle my code without having an existential crisis. Lenovo ThinkPad T16 Gen 2. This thing is a quiet workhorse with a keyboard so comfy you'll actually want to refactor that legacy code base. Plus, it's loaded with ports, like two Thunderbolt 4s for all your developer docs. It's built like a brick, but its design is so classic it's almost boring, and you'll definitely want to pop in a second stick of RAM to unlock its full power. Would I buy it? Yes, it's a reliable beast for coding marathons, as long as I get the bigger battery because the standard one barely lasts through a single compile. Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. This laptop packs a serious punch with its Intel Core Ultra 9 processor, making it a beast for heavy tasks. And it has a gorgeous, sharp 16-inch screen that's amazing to stare at for hours. But dear lord, the battery life is a joke, lasting only about six hours on a good day. And the fans scream bloody murder when you push it, so forget about coding in a quiet library. Would I buy it? Maybe, if I was permanently plugged into a wall and wore noise-canceling headphones. Because that raw power is tempting, but it's less of a laptop and more of a portable desktop. Asus VivoBook 16 M1605. Here we have a budget-friendly option with a decent full-size keyboard and a nice 16 to 10 display, which feels pretty good for the price point. The problem is, its single USB-C port can't output video, which for a developer wanting multiple monitors is like buying a sports car without a steering wheel. It's a baffling, deal-breaking decision. Would I buy it? No, because not being able to easily connect to an external monitor via USB-C is a cardinal sin for any serious developer's work. Dell Pro 16 Plus PB16250. 
This machine handles regular work and productivity tasks without breaking a sweat, making it seem like a decent, if incredibly boring, business laptop for churning out code. However, it completely freaks out and fails graphical benchmark tests that other laptops handle easily, suggesting it has some weird issues under the hood that I wouldn't want to discover mid-project. Would I buy it? No. The mysterious graphics failures are a huge red flag. I don't have time for a laptop that might have a breakdown when I try to run anything more demanding than a text editor. HP ZBook Power G11A. This thing is an absolute monster built for serious professional work like AI development and 3D modeling with options for insane amounts of RAM and storage, up to 64 gigabytes and eight terabytes respectively. It's so powerful it makes the other laptops look like children's toys, but it's also total overkill and probably costs a fortune if you're just a web or app developer who doesn't need to render the next Pixar movie. Would I buy it? Maybe, if my company was paying for it and I wanted to flex on everyone by compiling my entire operating system in five seconds flat. HP EliteBook Ultra G1Q. This thing has a battery life that lasts for an eternity. Seriously, we're talking a whopping 26 hours, so you can code from a mountaintop without a charger. But the screen is so basic, it makes vanilla ice cream look exotic. The Snapdragon X Elite processor is zippy for most things, but with only 16 gigabytes of RAM and a standard IPS screen, it feels a bit like putting a sports car engine in a family sedan. Would I buy it? Maybe, if my life depended on never seeing a power outlet again, but my eyes would be pretty bored. Asus ProArt P16. This beast is a developer's dream, with enough processing power to compile your code, and probably the entire internet at the same time, plus a keyboard so comfy you'll want to write a novel on it. However, the battery life is so short you'll need to be surgically attached to a wall socket, and it gets hotter and louder than a drive-in with a sore throat when you push it hard. Would I buy it? No, I prefer my lap to be a comfortable temperature, not a frying pan. Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 7. With an Intel Core Ultra 9 and an NVIDIA RTX 4070, this machine is an absolute powerhouse for coding and 3D rendering, and it's built like a tank that could survive the apocalypse. The only problem is the fans get so loud under load, you might think a 747 is taking off from your desk, and it costs more than a small car. Would I buy it? Yes, if I worked at an airport and could write off the price as a business expense because the performance is just that good. Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360. This laptop is ridiculously fast with its Intel Core Ultra processor and boasts a battery that just won't quit, lasting over 10 to 14 hours, which is perfect for those marathon coding sessions. But they put the touchpad off center because of the number pad, so using it feels like you're constantly trying to type while leaning to one side, which is just weird. Would I buy it? Yes, the performance and battery are amazing, and I guess I could just get used to living my life at a slight angle. Dell XPS 16 9640. Dell really tried to make a Windows MacBook Pro here, and damn, it's a beautiful machine with a stunning 4K OLED screen that will make your code look like a work of art. But while it looks premium, the performance doesn't quite beat a real MacBook, and the fan noise can be annoying when you're deep in thought. Would I buy it? No. If I'm spending this much for a MacBook experience, I'll just get the real thing and deal with Mac OS. Apple MacBook Air M4. This thing is so light and quiet, you'll forget it's even on, which is perfect for coding in a monastery or just ignoring your family in pace. And the battery lasts for what feels like an eternity. But with only two USB-C ports, I hope you love dongles, because you're about to enter a very committed and expensive relationship with them just to plug in a monitor and a hard drive at the same time. Would I buy it? Yes, if my main job was writing code on a beach and I valued silence and a crisp screen over the ability to plug in more than two things at once. Apple MacBook Pro M4 the M4 chip in this beast plows through code compilations like a hot knife through butter, and the battery life is so long you might actually forget how to use a power outlet. However, it's basically the same body as last year's model, and the webcam is still stuck at 1080p video, so your face will be crystal clear in meetings, but not that crystal clear, you know? Would I buy it? Maybe. The 120Hz screen is smoother than a dolphin in a tub of KY jelly, and the extra ports are a godsend, but 
It's a lot of cash for power that most developers won't even tickle. HP ZBook Fury 16 G11. This isn't a laptop, it's a portable server with a 24-core Intel i9 processor and a graphics card that could probably render the matrix in real time, making it total overkill for 99% of developers. It will handle absolutely any task you throw at it without breaking a sweat, but it's the kind of machine you get when your company has unlimited in the budget and you need to compensate for something. Would I buy it? No, unless I was a data scientist trying to simulate the Big Bang or a 3D artist designing a new planet. Because for writing code, this is like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13. This thing is so freakishly light you'll have to check your bag twice to make sure you didn't leave it at the coffee shop. And the legendary ThinkPad keyboard feels like typing on a cloud. It's a bit awkward that the new Lunar Lake chip can actually be slower in some multi-core tests than the previous generations, which feels like you paid for an upgrade and got a side grade. Would I buy it? Yes, this is the perfect machine for a developer who lives out of a suitcase and hates dongles with the fire of a thousand suns thanks to its awesome port selection. Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 5. Finally, a modern laptop with upgradable RAM. A feature so rare it's like spotting a unicorn. And the fans are impressively quiet even when you're pushing the hardware. That quiet comes at a price though, as the central processing unit can hit a toasty 100 degrees Celsius, which means it doubles as a very expensive lap warmer that might just set your pants on fire. Would I buy it? Hmm, maybe, if I needed a portable workstation for running lots of virtual machines and I wasn't scared of third degree burns on my thighs. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you pick the laptops for developers for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description.